Hey everybody, welcome to Overkill Projects, Walt here. Uh, I was editing the video that you're about to watch um, and I realized it's about twice as long as I wanted and actually logically covers two different topics. Uh, so I'm splitting it into two different videos. Today, uh, I'm just going to talk about the Paddock PMS 150C, uh, which is also commonly known as the three cent microcontroller. Uh, I'm just gonna review some of uh, the basics about you know what it is, uh, some of its features, and uh, a little bit about why you're going to want to go ahead and get the in-circuit emulator if you wanna program these things. And then in my next video, uh, in part two of this, uh, I'm gonna show you some like tips and tricks for programming it, uh, as well as uh, some very like weird things that you're gonna run into uh, and that you should look out for if you have any desire to work with this microcontroller or really any of the microcontrollers in the Paddock family. All right, so without further ado, here is part one. Uh, over the past month or so, I've actually been working on a project that at first was using the PMS-150C and then sort of upgraded to a slightly beefy brother in the PMS-154C. If for some reason you are unsure what a microcontroller is, this is probably the wrong video for you, but just very quickly, a microcontroller is a device that takes in electronic input uh, that can be from a user or from sensors or whatever, and then might do some sort of processing and then outputs a signal to other electronic peripherals. In other words, it controls the signals that happen in your electronics device. Just about every electronics device of sufficient complexity uh, has a microcontroller in it. Something like your car probably has dozens of them. Uh, really simple devices, like for instance, I have this little LED light thing here. Uh, this probably has maybe one microcontroller to control the brightness of the LEDs. So what is the big deal about a three cent microcontroller, I'm glad you asked. All right, first thing to dispel is that this is actually not a three cent microcontroller. In fact, if we take a look, it is something like a 2.4 cent microcontroller when you buy it in large quantities, which you're almost certainly going to do because these things are cheap, 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 which means you're probably going to design to put them in devices, which are themselves cheap, cheap, cheap. So now the reason that that price is incredible is that it is something like a factor of 10 less than the nearest competition from the major semiconductor companies. So a very similar offering from ST Micro, the STM8S001J3, uh, which again, it's similar in function functionality at quantity 10,000 comes in at something like 22 cents. Uh, similarly, there are sort of the smaller offerings from say microchip in the AT tiny line. They actually come in at 30 cents per chip. That's way more expensive. It's 10 times as expensive as the Paddock PMS 150C. That is why this is such an incredible device. So now you might be thinking that the PMS 150C then must come with some sort of serious limitations. And generally speaking, it does not. It does most of what those other microcontrollers does. There is one huge limitation though, and that is that the PMS 150C is an OTP or a one-time programmable device. That means you can only program this chip one time and that's it. This is a huge deal because when you're designing a product, when you're working on your project, you're probably going to go through dozens of code iterations. And since these things are SMD solderable only, that means that you would have to program one of the devices, solder it onto the PCB that you've had made for your prototype or whatever. And then when that thing inevitably does not work the way you wanted it to, you're going to have to program a new one, unsolder the old one, solder in the new one, in order to do your next code change. That is an awful lot of work for every single code change. Luckily, there is an excellent solution. Paddock makes a very good in-circuit emulator or ICE that can actually emulate any of the microcontrollers across their entire product range. That is extremely handy. It means that there's no soldering involved for your prototype board. You just simply include a header and then emulate the microcontroller that you want to use. And even better, if you want to change to one of their other microcontrollers, there's no big crazy hardware updates, you just simply pop in the other uh, microcontroller in the emulator, change the pin header a little bit, and boom, off you go. You're ready to go with the new microcontroller. Now, this creates a little bit of controversy because in the hobbyist community, people want to be able to use these three cent microcontrollers in their projects um, without having to invest the money in the in circuit emulator. However, I view this as a non problem because the in circuit emulator from Paddock 
costs something like $40, which is extremely affordable for a device like this, extremely affordable. In fact, they're almost giving it away. It is to other in-circuit emulators what the PMS150C is to other microcontrollers. It's something like one-tenth the cost of the next closest in-circuit emulators, which typically run hundreds or thousands of dollars each. And seriously, at $40, if you're complaining about the price, all you really need to do is run out and find yourself maybe five to 10 friends who'd be willing to share in the cost with you. And then you can just split the one emulator since you're not gonna be working on the same thing, you know, all at the same time. And at any rate, like I said, it's way easier to use the emulator than it is to go through a bunch of chips. Uh, even if you do buy an entire tube of them like this, you don't wanna just be flying through them every time you need to make a code change. All right, so very quickly, let's just take a look at the uh, PMS150C data sheet and run down some of the features that you can find on this microcontroller. Here is the data sheet and I've actually found that the data sheets for these microcontrollers are pretty good. You know, they're pretty well documented, uh, even if maybe there's the occasional uh, slight language barrier because the people who wrote the data sheet clearly don't speak English natively. But if we take a look at the table of contents, you can see that this thing includes, among other things, uh, you know, there is a pretty fair amount of uh, memory actually, which is a good thing. It comes with two internal clock sources. There's a high speed and a low speed internal clock. Um, there's a comparator, which is fantastic, and it has an internal uh, voltage reference, which is pretty good. Uh, there are two timers, a 16-bit timer and an 8-bit timer. Each of them can use uh, an array of clock sources. Uh, in fact, the uh, the timer 2, the 8-bit timer, can actually use the comparator output as one of the sources, which uh, is pretty darn handy. There's a watchdog timer, which is pretty common. Uh, there's a whole interrupt system, which we're going to take a look at in a minute. Uh, and then it has some power save options and of course just normal IO compatibility. You'll notice that there's no built in like SPI or I squared C interface stuff, uh, but that's not a huge deal. You can kind of just uh, what's called bit bang that stuff in if you need to use it. Uh, and for the cost, uh, frankly, it doesn't make sense not to just make your own implementation. And just real quick before we actually look at some code, this highlights just how incredible the price of this microcontroller is because it includes a comparator. And now if you take a look, uh, I called up somewhere here, uh, the cheapest comparator I could find online. And at quantities 10,000, it actually comes in at 2.2 cents. Now remember the microcontroller costs 2.4 cents and it has not only a comparator, but all those other features, timers and all that other stuff and the ability to you know do math and comparisons and all sorts of stuff. It's really a fantastic deal. All right, so that is a pretty good logical place for me to stop part one. Like I said before, uh, part two, we'll pick up uh, where this one left off and we will see actual code examples, uh, some tips, tricks, uh, you know, some like little tidbits about why this thing is so weird to program uh, and some pitfalls to avoid if you plan on working with this controller yourself. So if you enjoyed yourself today, make sure you hit the like button, uh, subscribe down below. Uh, in the description, you'll see links to everything that we talked about today. Make sure you comment if you have anything to say. Thank you so much for joining me and I will check you out next time for part two.